100% of us have anxiety now. And that volume is turned way, way up. Too much of anything, even a good thing, is bad. So the first, and, and one of the things that I tried so hard to do in this book is give every single person who reads this book a whole bunch of tools to be able to turn that anxiety down. Because that is step one, number one, in, in harnessing the goodness of your anxiety. What's up everybody and welcome to the show today. We drop great content each and every week and we wanna make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're gonna to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. The idea of good anxiety really came about thinking about anxiety from an evolutionary perspective. The emotion of anxiety didn't evolve just to be a big old anchor around our neck. That's not why things evolve. It evolved to protect us. It evolved to, uh, um, it's actually essential for our survival. So that makes a lot more sense. And that really shifts the original kind of thought process and mindset around anxiety. It's not something that you want to sweep under the carpet, sweep out the door. It's something that you want to try and leverage so you can be protected, so you can uh, um, kind of help your survival. And so I started with that and then started to explore, well, okay, how come nobody these days is, are feeling protected um, from their anxiety? We have to start there because I know everybody's thinking that right now. And the answer to that is um, that all of us, including myself, have the volume on our anxiety turned way up these days. It's shown in all the stats. Even before, here's my wow stat. Even before the pandemic, did you know that 90% of Americans raised their hands and said, I experience anxiety on a daily basis? 90%, this was before the pandemic. Clinical levels of anxiety went up by 30% over the pandemic, which basically you have to think that 100% of us have anxiety now. And that volume is turned way, way up. Too much of anything, even a good thing, is bad. So the first, and, and one of the things that I tried so hard to do in this book is give every single person who reads this book a whole bunch of tools to be able to turn that anxiety down. Because that is step one, number one, in, in harnessing the goodness of your anxiety. Well, you're here to give us those tools, and we're going to get to that in just a minute. But one of the questions I want to ask, and you were saying that too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. And one of the reasons that I am I am with you on that 90% is that uh, I think it was about around 2009, the studies were coming out of showing with more leisure time that we have and using our technology to indulge ourselves and be a consumer has given us more time to feel that anxiety and enhance that anxiety, do the comparing and contrasting on social media to be slammed with so much news. And of course, the best news to us that gets us fired up is the most horrible news. So we're getting, we are, we are not only being force fed that news, we're searching it out. We were just talking about it earlier. And so a lot of this is doing this to ourselves and then we're slammed with, I feel anxiety, I need to rid myself of this, which is the wrong procedure. That's the way, wrong way of looking at it. And so having a healthy understanding of what anxiety is, why we have it and how we can use it is gonna be beneficial to us rather than this idea of, I could find a pill, I could find something to do, I could ignore it, it'll go away. Because if you do try to sweep it under the rug, well, I'm sure you could tell us on what is going to happen if, if we play that game. I would just love to ask, obviously there are moments in our life where we will feel anxiety. You, you can't avoid it. But what do, do we know clinically where it's something that we need to seek attention, we need to seek help? Because I think that's really a great starting point for our audience when we know our anxiety is overwhelming and we should probably talk to a professional. Perfect, that, that's the perfect question. And the answer is that anxiety exists on a very wide spectrum. There is clinical levels of anxiety, which is a different beast. It is a condition where your levels of anxiety are truly debilitating. You can't, 
work. You can't interact uh, with your world. Uh, um, you need to go to a professional, a, a, a doctor, just like you would if you had a broken leg. Now, I did not write the book to treat clinical levels of anxiety. That's a really, really important point. So thank you for bringing that up. I wrote it to treat what I call everyday anxiety, the lower um, kind of levels of intensity of anxiety, yet that anxiety we know that everybody is feeling, we know that it is draining, we know that it is affecting us, we know it's affecting sometimes us for you know most of the awaking hours in the day because of this social media that is affecting us most of the waking hours of this day. And so the approaches that I, that I describe, not that people with clinical anxiety can't use it, but they were designed for uh, people with everyday anxiety. And I certainly put myself in that category. Uh, in fact, I outed myself while I was writing the book or I realized I am an anxiety denier or I was an anxiety denier. I started writing this book thinking, okay, I'm a neuroscientist, this is an interesting question. Let me dive in because, you know, I don't have that much anxiety myself, but, but let's just dive into it. And as I'm doing this research, it's like, oh my God, I, I have so much anxiety. <laughs> Good thing I'm writing this book because it's really helping me. We drop great content each and every week and we wanna make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're gonna to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. And many of us have behaviors and coping mechanisms that allow us to mitigate it and not realize that it's impacting us. What are some of those behaviors that our audience might be engaging in that's actually increasing their anxiety and they're not aware? Well, um, you know, I think a common one is just this, this uh, reflex. We have to sweep it under the rug. So I, I just always wanted to, again, going back to myself as my, my example, I wanted to be the uh, upbeat, the happy one, the energetic one. So I, I can't show anxiety. That, that is against my brand. Yet I was feeling these emotions and that's why such a big part of this book is the message that anxiety is part of our normal range of human emotions. We were not designed to be 100% happy 100% of the time. We have all of these emotions. And why do we have anxiety? We have anxiety because that fear, that worry is saying, hey, this is important to you. Pay attention to this. And um, that is very important. You, you get scared if you're you know, going to teach a big you know, uh, course with thousands of people waiting to hear what you're gonna tell them. Um, and, and you get a little bit nervous because that is an important consideration. That is a useful emotion. If you were at the same level of you know, activation as you are watching Netflix on your couch, you would not give a very good presentation. So it is essential. That is why it's essential. I can laugh about the, the point you were making about speaking in front of a lot of people. And for myself, when I feel the most anxiety, it is usually during, and we were talking about this yesterday, it's usually during weeks of a program that we are running at the Art of Charm. And this weekend, we have a, a weekend boot camp that is happening here in Las Vegas. And with everything that I needed to get done throughout the week, I could feel the stress, the anxiety, just working itself up to where at a fever pitch yesterday where I was in this snappy, not in a tolerable mood for anyone to deal with. And then so this morning, knowing that he was pulling in, we had a big day, I felt great because we're in we're in procession. We're in we're moving into uh, program time. And so it started and now it's like everything else that I was worried about, I'm not gonna worry about that. Now I'm just focused on making the most incredible experience for ourselves and our clients for this weekend. And that put me in a place to feel much better about what is going on. No, that is a great tool to use. Remember why you're doing this. That anxiety is telling you, you love giving these, these presentations. I could just tell. And, and um, we get worried and worked up because we want it to be so good. You could focus more on you know, I'm doing this because this is my passion. This is my dream. And, and all of this work is going to be so that I could have these great interactions with the people or whatever, whatever that activity is. 
Um, I often remind myself of that because it's not just you and I that have these feelings of worry and, and fear and snappiness that comes uh, when, when things start to get overwhelming, which they're doing now um, every other day. And I know many of us in the current state especially are so focused on work. It feels like work is 24 seven, three, six, five, and that causes a lot of anxiety. And the breakdown in communication, we used to be able to go into the office and see our boss relate to one another in a more physical space. And now many of our clients are coming to us feeling increased anxiety because they don't know what their boss thinks about their performance. They don't know how they're fitting in in the team. And there's this interpersonal dynamic to anxiety that we're seeing rising in our clients. So what role do relationships have on our anxiety levels? Yeah, relationships have a huge effect on your anxiety level. So of course, the better the relationship, the more open, uh, the more communicative, the better. And the more just Zoom-like, where it's just transactional, okay, let's come on, let's get our stuff done and leave. It's like, what happened? Was that good? Was that good enough? Um, it, it can uh, exacerbate our anxiety. So I think that's a wonderful, um, wonderful reminder to all of the bosses, the supervisors, the managers to remind you, and I remind myself, I manage lots of students, lots of interns, um, that, that it's up to you to remind others that you know we're here, we're a team, we're doing it together and to check in. I, I actually, before every lab meeting, before every intern meeting, we do um, a two minute meditation together to bring everybody into that space. It's only two minutes. We would have waited two minutes just for everybody to get there in the first place. And it's a reminder that we are, we are human. We're there together. We're there for a purpose. And um, it's really helped, especially, I, I never used to do this when we weren't on Zoom, but I will continue when we get off Zoom, hopefully. Yeah. For many of us, it's that lack of communication that is anxiety inducing. We don't know where we stand. We don't know how people feel about us. And of course, we're trying our best to do our tasks and go about our day to day. But that anxiety does get to a fever pitch. So for Johnny, yesterday, he was snappy. I was feeling it and it was starting to impact us. And, and let's talk about some strategies when you now have a gauge and you start to recognize in yourself that this anxiety is not only impacting me, but it's impacting my coworkers, my spouse, my friends. How do we start to mitigate that? So let me use Johnny's example from yesterday. So you had anxiety uh, that was uh, um, kind of stimulating your underlying physiological stress response. And this is what happens when you go into stress. It is activating that fight or flight response. And what is happening in your body is that your heart rate is going up, your respiration is going up, blood is being shunted, from your digestion and reproductive systems to your muscles, because that is the evolutionary uh, kind of response so that you can either fight whoever is coming at you or run away. And, um, and you have these you know, heightened feelings of, of fear and anxiety. And so how do we do that? So here is what everybody should know, but very few people do. Did you know that there is a, a equal and opposite part of your nervous system that is devoted to de-stressing you? That was the fight or flight. Did you know about the rest and digest part of your nervous system? It's called the parasympathetic nervous system. And it is naturally deployed after a stressful event to try and get you back down. Of course, if the stressful things are still coming at you, you don't come down for a long time. So everybody should be asking, how do I activate that? What, how, how do I do that? And the best way to activate that is to breathe deeply because the parasympathetic system decreases your respiration rate decreases your heart rate and actually shunts blood from your muscles to your digestion and reproductive organs. And so the, the best and most conscious way you have to start to control that and activate that is deep, slow breath. Not surprising that the most ancient form of meditation, relaxation, is deep breathing.